Hi, my name is Julie Sukup. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Take One Patient, um, a podcast about um, communication excellence. Today I have with me Dr. Andy Little. He is the program director for the ER um, at Advent Health Central Florida. Um, I'm going to let you introduce yourself, but I think it's interesting how I found you um, was actually a study that you were doing Mm -hmm. um, where you were leveraging recording um, and, and the impact kind of that was on providers and their perspective about all that. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to email you and see what you think, because obviously medical memory, that's what we do too. Um, So I thought it was interesting even how we met was just from this this study that you did and finding your name. Uh, But why don't we start first? Why don't you tell um, us just a little bit about you Mm -hmm. um, and what you do and kind of what led you um, into going into emergency medicine? Yeah. So like Julie said, I'm Andy Little, a program director for the emergency medicine residency at Advent Health uh, Orlando in Central Florida. I have always wanted to do emergency medicine, but Julie and I were doing the prep. It was, uh, I grew up wanting to be a firefighter and then somewhere along the way realized I really liked the idea of going into medicine because my dad, uh, you know, changed his career in his forties and became a physician's assistant and did emergency medicine. And I grew up around the culture, the the physicians, the families, the, you know, everything. I just really, really loved it. And I went into medicine specifically with the idea of doing emergency medicine. And luckily as it all worked out, that's what I do now. Um, Julie brought up, you know, how, how did we meet? And it was honestly, I, I attended uh, a leadership meeting early on in my career after graduating from residency and came across this idea of being recorded by patients. And so in that, I thought, man, this is a really interesting idea that made me kind of ponder, would I benefit from recording parts of our encounter with patients? And so I actually started recording discharge instructions with patients because I found that's sometimes where patients have the most questions. And so I, I started doing that personally. And then we did a study at where I was working at the time at doctor's hospital in Columbus, Ohio, and did a, a, a small pilot study with ED nurses and ED physicians and residents and really got some interesting results for, for me. I found it very helpful and felt very good about doing it, but found that overall there was a ton of concerns from providers about being recorded, whether it was for legal reasons or, you know, quality reasons. And, and, and it's, Again, not the findings we were suspecting of having, um, but despite that study, it's still something I do on a routine basis. I just finished four night shifts, and last night, you know, two thirty in the morning, had a young family bring in their child with a fever and uh, walk them through. Hey, the exam actually looks really good, but as we know, fevers evolve and diseases evolve. So here are the reasons to come back, and so actually recorded on the phone um, with the mom and the dad who were there at bedside because at two o'clock in the morning, one, you're tired and three, I say a lot of medical words that nobody understands. And so having that actual recording um, is helpful because hopefully they'll later today, if they still have a fever, they'll be like, what did Dr. Little say? And they can pull up that audio recording I made on their phone. And then they can make a good decision to come back to the ED or to go see their pediatrician, but be empowered with that information. So that's, that's how kind of how we're today. And I I feel like this is a great um, topic to talk about because there is some stigma involved with it. And I, was talking with one of my colleagues about this recording session and they know that I record and they even said that you're not worried about being sued. And, and my answer was, how am I going to get in trouble for doing what's right for patients? And so yeah. as long as I'm not doing something stupid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you, and you hit on a lot of topics, you know, yeah. we also have been working with a few different um, ER doctors and programs kind of throughout the country where similarly um, they chose, you know, I want to record this message, you know, emotions are high. It's late at night, mm-hmm. potentially like the main caregiver might not be there or yeah. people at home might, might be, you know, needing this information. Um, and so of course with medical memory, you know, they're recording it and it's all at a HIPAA compliant Um, platform where both people have have access to it with you I know that you're at this time kind of using your phone Mm -hmm. Uh, so let's kind of take one step back so talk about what what is it like if you were gonna like is there a model you follow or or what is kind of the pattern or cadence of what you actually are recording um, with these patients yeah so it's the we know that in at least from an emergency medicine standpoint there's the initial touch point where I introduce myself I do the history and physical I make some decisions on what I'm going to order And then there's usually a result conversation where we go over results and maybe have to, um, again, reassess interventions we've given, whether it's pain medicine or fever medicine. Um, And then there's the discharge discussion. And and to me, I I find the the biggest bang for my buck is to offer them, hey, would you like me to record this on your phone as we talk about it so you know why you should come back or why you shouldn't come back? And that's, again, I don't don't offer it to everybody, but I offer it to possession. I offer it to special scenarios. I usually do it a ton in pediatric patients, especially with young parents 
or when one parent isn't at the bedside, you know, as a father of four, I have had to take my patient to the, I've had to take my kids to the hospital when my spouse was not available. And so, and even as a physician, I know that they said stuff to me that I didn't, I'm like, yeah, whatever, just give me the paperwork. I just got to go. And it would have been nice to have that recorded. And so those are kind of people I definitely reach out to, or it's the, Hey, it's an elderly patient who's here with uh, a caregiver, but POA, whether it's a, a child or a spouse is not available. So I'll offer it to them. And I just say, Hey, this is Dr. Little wanted to run over the visit with Mary. Uh, Mary was here today for abdominal pain. Um, you know, we did, we did some, we did some blood, we did some imaging. We didn't really find a good reason of it, but we know that abdominal pain changes over time. Here are the reasons that Mary should feel good about what we did and kind of walk through that. Hey, the blood work was negative. The imaging didn't show this. She was concerned about say a bowel obstruction and the CAT scan didn't show that. But here are some things I'd want Mary to either go see your family doctor for in a few days, or I'd want her to come back to the emergency department. And it's just a natural conversation. And that's what I would typically have with the patient anyways. Yeah. And I say, hey, let's just record it. Yeah. Um, and again, it's one of those where I'm supposed to do it. So I might as well record what I'm doing so the right people get the information so they can make a good decision. So, yeah. And, and, and that's, it's so funny that you say that because, you know, even we say that all the time, it's, you're doing this information, you're giving this information no mm -hmm. matter what, yeah. um, just record it so that they can have that reference. Yeah. And so it sounds like even for you, you're not recording this whole visit or anything uh -huh. along those lines. It's really just this like maybe two to four minute snippet yeah. mm -hmm. um, of kind of what they can expect uh, upon leaving the hospital and, and yeah. in the next few days. Yeah. And it's one where I, I've gotten to see some people in, you know, we call bounce backs, you know, back within 72 hours and, uh, and I have gotten to see that patient come back and they're like, Hey, I really appreciate the message. It empowered them to know that, no, we need to come back to the emergency department. And then I've seen a couple where they'll come back months later with a different family member and they'll be, I walk in the room and they're like, Hey, Dr. Little. And I'm like, I, I don't remember you, but I appreciate that you enjoyed our visit. Um, and they'll say, Hey, I really appreciated your visit because we had some concerns, but what you put in the, in the message helped us not come back because yeah. we knew that like everything was okay. And, and in there, I have the, usually the frank conversation, your pain might not get better in the next 24 hours. And I also set some expectations of their disease process, knowing that, you know, if you have the flu, you're going to feel kind of terrible for three or four days. So it's okay to feel terrible for three or four days. And I think people just, they want reassurance um, for either side of the coin, whether it's reassurance to come back or reassurance that to stay the course with their, with their disease process, knowing that they just don't know. So, yeah. And I think that you really, you know, especially in our initial conversation and just how you said it now, it, it does shift that thinking a little bit, especially, you know, we're so focused on preventing readmission, preventing readmissions and doing everything to prevent it. Um, and that kind of becomes like, oh, these are the tools or this recording is a tool to be able to prevent that. And for a lot of patients, okay, now I do know I'm supposed to be in pain. Okay. It is supposed to be a couple of days. I'm watching that video again. He said 48 hours. It's only been 24. You know, I know that it, this is the course that like my body has to go to, but I think what you said also was really profound in that these are the reasons to come back in. And so that you can also say, Hey, I feel empowered, not like a nuisance, not like it's a problem, mm -hmm. yeah. but empowered that if these things that you said in these videos, that that is a reason to come back in. And so that they're coming back in truly for kind of the right reasons and not just fear or um, mm -hmm. lack of understanding. Yeah. And I find that again, having the audio recording makes a difference because, you know, when I talk to colleagues, they're, they all say, well, that's what that's what the printed discharge instructions are for. And now it's the that's what the electronic discharge are for because patients get it on their phone. And and we have a stack of where I trained, we don't have, we don't use blue paper here, but where I did residency and worked initially, we gave all of our discharge instruction papers in blue. And we just had like a recycling bin outside that was all of the blue discharge papers because patients leave the emergency department and treat it kind of like the takeout receipt. They just yeah. throw it in the trash can. And so it's the, I'm not providing them with a service by printing them discharge instructions, but if I can give them a little audio recording for the right patient, um, it makes a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about a little bit about your, your study that you okay. did, mm -hmm. some of the yeah. results that, that you said were a little bit interesting. And I believe it was kind of the provider, correct me if I'm wrong, provider perspective on being recorded during, mm -hmm. in, uh, during the emergency or in, in the emergency. Yeah. Um, it's really, it's focused on the provider perspective mm -hmm. um, as it relates to whether patients have the rights or not, um, or whether this should or shouldn't be happening. Um, go ahead and share if you have them. I might even have the numbers too, if you're not yeah. 
right off of, of um, what you really learned in that study. Yeah. So again, it was a small study. It was done at our, our hospital through Ohio Health Doctors Hospital, 57 people, which again, might sound small, but compared to other studies that have been done with this particular question was about the right size. Um, again, doctors, nurses, and EM residents, and really focused on a couple different phases of care. So one, it was the overall question, have you been recorded or knowing they've been recorded? And surprisingly, I think people forget that now in the age of cell phones and technology, I know that yesterday I was recorded four or five times because people, people had their phones out, whether I was doing a procedure or whether I was talking without really my initiating that I got recorded. And yeah. so we know people are recording. So a lot of people didn't think they were being recorded. So that was interesting to, again, to get that perspective of, well, people assume I'm not being recorded, but I, I know that's not the case. Um, yeah. And then the second part was, when would you want to be recorded? And we asked, would it be during the initial evaluation, during discharge, during result conversations, or during the physical exam? And across the board, people just didn't want to be recorded. And again, when we looked at the reasons why, the biggest ones were related to risk for malpractice, um, uh, privacy, and then um, uh, overall, just again, the uneasiness of being recorded. But at the same time, people agreed that people had the right to do that. And so right. it was really interesting to where as much as people didn't want this to happen in any phase of the care and didn't think patients were going to do it, most people believe that people had a right to do that. And so I think it's where we have these kind of competing interests with these results, which is why it's interesting because it's the people realize that people have a right to record this because it's their medical visit. It's their health record. But I also don't want them to do it because I'm concerned, you know, I might say something wrong, something I might say might be taken the wrong way and they could lead to litigation. Right. And so that was what I thought was also interesting, too, because I think you had um, like 35 percent of patients or uh, of providers agreed that patients had that right. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so funny because that actually aligns with this study that was done in JAMF that was like 35, 36 percent of patients secret, secretly record like yeah. without the provider ever knowing it. So that was a totally different study that was taken. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting that that number was the same of the people that felt that they had that right or patients mm -hmm. had that right. Well, that's the same amount of people that secretly record. Yeah. But you also had that 56% said that um, video or recording should be provided. But then you yeah. go into the counter side of that, of, of you know, the 60, 62 or 63% yeah. Um, we're worried about medical, you know, legal liability. So it is, it's, it's, it, that is one of the biggest reasons I think mm -hmm. even too, for, for medical memory that we started really pushing this and promoting this, um, wasn't necessarily to kind of catch, uh, any provider in, in, in the act of doing something wrong, but was more so seeing, Hey, this is something that, that is really needed. Take it away from a patient feeling like they have to be sneaky or catch mm -hmm. something yeah. or they just want more of the information and put it into the hands of the provider and saying, we're going to give this to you because, you know, over 50% of our providers feel like this should be provided. Yeah. Um, now let me ask you this question. How long have you been recording your discharge instructions? Uh, this will be, I started in 2017. So this we're going on eight years. Yeah. So a year out of residency, uh, somebody posed it to me um, as again, that's when I went to that conference and I was like this, this makes sense. And again, I, like I said, I don't do it for everybody. So yesterday I saw a large number of patients did it for four or five. Um, Cause you know, you kind of get the feel that, you know, I don't know, this is a patient I'm worried, doesn't understand what's going on. You know, it's a new, it's a new diagnosis. Um, but people with established problems who have established follow-up, maybe I don't do it as often. And there's yeah. definitely like a feeling of like, I don't feel, I, cause even as someone who does it, I don't feel comfortable doing this for everybody. Yeah. But I do see a vein where it's the, I know that when I see somebody for abdominal pain and their workup is negative, which means all their tests show no acute abnormalities, which includes imaging, blood work, they respond well to medication. I know that I'm going to have the same conversation with that person basically every time with some nuances and resources available, uh, medications I'm going to send them home with, and then what I want them to come back for. And so why shouldn't I build a standard way? And I do, I have a standard way I talk about abdominal pain. I have a standard way I talk about chest pain. I have a standard way I talk about pediatric fever. Yeah. And so that's where, if it's a conversation that I know I'm very comfortable with, and I feel like the patients are the right ones, I offer it to them. Yeah. And it's, and sometimes I offer it and they're like, no, we, we, we understand, we appreciate it. We, you know, or I say, Hey, can I record it? And there's like a sigh of relief because they know that I'm about to have this conversation that probably is above um, their healthcare knowledge level, whether even though I'm going to speak down to them or speak at a level that I think is appropriate, but then it's something that they can go back to later and feel comforted knowing they have the right information. So, yeah. 
So, um, and it's interesting that you say that because for many of our doctors, actually specifically in the ER, and you just said this, is a lot of times when you're coming into the ER for, for one reason, you're leaving with the same reason you kind of came yeah. in. Everything's good, you know? Yeah. Um, and and kind of that's the goal. Like you don't want a gallbladder surgery yeah. or appendix yeah. out or something like yeah. that. I mean, you kind of want to leave with the same mm -hmm. thing that you came in knowing fear not it's it's not a big thing yeah um and and so a lot of those i think there was like you know one of our uh physicians that has a bunch of different emergency clinics started creating like a lot of the same videos that you're making mm -hmm. of the same information that you provide over and over and over again yeah. and pre-recording that content mm -hmm. that goes over all risks and benefits and alternatives so that way each you know you know what's in that video you know what's been covered you yeah. can even have a little caveat of like this is only part of the conversation that we've had but it's still providing that video which yeah. has more robust information um th than just kind of recording so it's interesting you say that you're like there's some i know and it's just like i just spew yeah. it um, where we've worked with some providers in the ER that that saw that and were like, let's pr at least pre-record some of these um, to provide that that content um, and to potentially take a little bit of that unknown risk of mm -hmm. what I might say, what might happen away because they know it's in the video and they know it has like, a disclosure of this is only part of your conversation please refer to your you know like yeah, I, 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 I probably should i probably should make my own disclosure at the end like this was recorded by dr andrew little there <laughs> this was done over the phone it might not be perfect yeah i, I have right, to come up right. with my own disclosure now thinking about so yeah. you've been so you've been recording for eight years now mm -hmm. now have you ever had any legal issues that have evolved from recording uh, no. And, and I think that's, I, I think that's the take home for me is, is that, you know, I, I never want to take a small sample size and apply it to a larger base, but I have, I have done this for patients who some would say are high risk returns, right? So people who come in with undifferentiated symptoms who um, leave and they still leave with a large list of um, concerning medical problems that could lead to their return. And it, it's again, knock on wood, haven't had it, haven't had a poor outcome. Yes. And if anything, for the ones I've actually gotten feedback from, it's it's been universally positive. Again, because you know we've all been. If you haven't been that patient who doesn't understand what their care was, or you haven't had you know your grandmother go to the doctor and you weren't able to be there, um, and then you wonder what happened in the visit, and then oh man, I called her the next day and she doesn't feel better. What would the doctor want to happen? And the patient doesn't remember, and the person that went with them doesn't remember. Like yeah. you kind of feel isolated and like you don't have the information possible, and so. This is the this I think is a bridge for that. Whether it's you do it on their phone, you have a a set of discharge instructions that you've already had recorded. Um, it's just going to empower patients again to make the right decision, whether it's to come back for the right reasons, or whether it's to stay home and ride out the course of their disease, or fall up with their family doctor. Um, yeah. And it's just going to make them feel um, empowered to understand what's going on. Yeah. Well, and similarly, you know, on a much bigger scale, you know, we've recorded um 170,000 videos if you can believe it wow. um now it, mostly they are into clinic orthopedic mm -hmm. um inpatient care some discharge you know there's a little bit of a, a a mix of everything um and with that we've actually only had two legal cases where medical memory was actually used to help support the provider okay. because similarly similarly they were saying we've done everything we can to make sure that you understand okay. all of this information um yeah. and all and now it's kind of up to you i think one was like don't smoke within 48 like whatever it was something one yeah. was smoking and it clearly he has said that was a risk um and and then the patient you know didn't do it didn't follow it um, and then all of a sudden, and I, and it feels like, you know, when we've, um, we've partnered with some malpractice insurers that actually say, no, it mitigates risk, you know, and we can give that opinion all day. It still is. There's something, you know, that providers, it makes them nervous. Um, you know, we've had insurance companies say that, Hey, uh, we'll, we'll provide an additional writer, like an additional amount of coverage. If you record, um, that it takes away the, he said, she said, mm -hmm. um, but to what you just said is at the end of the day is the patients that tend to like sue or get mad are the ones that are confused. They mm -hmm. don't understand yeah. and something bad happened. Yeah. And so that was where, you know, the legal advice that we've been provided time and time and time again with studies of showing that this is in, in benefit to it is all in alignment with, um, unless you're recording yourself doing something, you know, there is mm -hmm. that takes away that he said, she said benefit of the doubt. I'm doing everything I can to best educate this person and make sure that they are also, 
um, reassured with what they should be doing um, and having the tools to to share that video with whoever might also be invested in their care. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's one of those when I when people ask me about it, I, I have coworkers ask, you know, why do I do it? It, it all comes down to you're never going to do. Sorry, you're never going to get in trouble for doing the right thing and leaving your patient better educated about their visit is never the wrong thing. And so that's kind of how I feel about it. Again, I, I don't do it with everybody, but when I do do it, I feel reassured that these are patients that I want to empower to be educated about their care. Um, and I've never had that lead to a poor outcome. Yeah. So. Yeah. So if you were going to give it any advice then to a new physician who's like, I'm thinking about using this, I know this is kind of like, just as you said, 35, per, well, I said that with this Jamf article, but like it said, 35% of patients secretly record, yeah. um, which, which is then like they're recording anything, right? Um, you know, what would, what would you say to providers that are thinking about using it, even just to control that recording? Like, have you ever had someone where you're like, I'm going to record this? And they're like, okay, they like turn off their phone. Like now I know, but, but then you can decide when it's what, when, and how yeah. that's being recorded versus, versus the other, you know, I, so I guess that was a twofold question, but I'll, yeah, I'll well, I, I think the answer to the first part is I've had patients when I said, Hey, do you, I would like to record these, these, our conversation about discharge. They've hung up with the family member that was secretly on the phone. They're like, Hey, the doctor's going to talk to me. Like, and I didn't know they were on the phone with them because their yeah. phone's on the table. They're like, Hey, the doc's going to record something for me. I'll call you back. And they'll hang up the phone. And so I've been able to control my audience yeah. to where it's with the patient. Um, and then also, I think the other big thing is, is that you are already having this conversation where you should be giving medically accurate information. You should be acting in the best interest of the patients and you shouldn't be saying things that are inappropriate. Yeah. So you should be reassured that anything that you say could be recorded and would only benefit the patient. And so try it out on a couple people. So pick patients that you know well, if you're, if you're in primary, if you're, if you have your own practice and it's established or pick patients that are, I don't know, maybe more low risk. So pediatric fevers. We know that most people with pediatric fevers do really well. Record yeah. that video just to reassure mom and dad. Yeah. Pick people who, you know, young abdominal pains, typically low risk for fall, for for bad outcomes to come back. Pick those ones. So pick people with lower risk um, diagnoses that get discharged to begin with to get comfortable recording that and kind of building a cadence of, yeah, I, I do have this same conversation every time. Yeah. And I should feel comfortable, again, giving it to the patient. So they're empowered and they don't have to rely on the paper or digital dis discharge instructions. They're not going to read. Right. And that goes back to even with us is, you know, we're showing, okay, it's 170,000, you know, and it's mitigating across the board. Yeah. We've done a few studies with this. Yeah. And, and as you said, it, it puts that control back. Like I've, I'm, I mean, for me, I'm not confident if I was going to a provider and he's like, I'm not confident that I'm going to record this so that you have access to it. Yeah. Like my just, you instantly would relax. And I'm sure you see that wave come yeah. over patients. So just instantly. Um, and that's, what's interesting. We're all concerned or worried about something we don't know about of, Oh my, what if, what if, what if, but study after study is starting to show it mitigates risk. It improves yeah. patient experience. So take, take control of it. Uh, and so I love that you're doing it with your phone. You know, I'm still on you and, and we'll try to convince you to, to use it with medical memory. Cause mm -hmm. then both you and the patient, yeah get a copy of the video. It's not yeah. just like in ether, you know, and I think yeah. that's one of the big things for a lot of providers is mm -hmm. they control that video. And so yeah. even for providers that have recorded patient gets a copy of it, they actually have a very simple medium um, to share it in a web portal, but also the provider can turn off the, the, the they can turn it off. So if they recorded yeah. something and they're like, Oh, that was not like, that was a weird interaction as they yeah. say, or anything like that, they're in full control of it. So you're okay. still getting this benefit of educating the patient. They know what's going on. Yeah. You know, you're controlling the recording, controlling the ball, but really like you can turn on, you know, that access. And so it kind of gives a little bit more support, but I love what you, what you said, you know, throughout this of like, you know, it's really empowering them and reassuring them mm -hmm. and, and using this tool to do so. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's one of those where I, I want, I want my patients to leave happier that they were seen, um, with less symptoms than what they came with. So in less pain, less other stuff going on. And then I want them to leave more educated. And so this just like leads to that baseline understanding of one of my missions as a physician and someone who works in emergency medicine is to calm people's nerves and to educate them about their future. So it just, this, this is something that no, a lot of people again, feel worried about, but, um, trust me, it, it helps.
Awesome. Well, I so appreciate your passion about this. It was funny that I was like, people don't think this, like, let me get you on on a podcast because we got to talk about it. So I so appreciate your passion, your conviction, especially, you know, it makes so much sense. You wanted to be a firefighter and that you're carrying that like servant heart of leadership kind of into ER medicine that that you have done. So I appreciate you and I'm sure your patients do. And um, thank you so much for kind of talking about it. Is there anything kind of last that you want to add at all? No, this has been great, Julie. I appreciate you guys reaching out. Again, This, uh, if you're listening, this is the power of the internet to where you can Google something, find somebody interesting and have an awesome conversation. So thanks for having me. Right, absolutely. Thank you so much.